as usual, this is offering you a space to ask us some questions, but we'll be also presenting some new things we'll be working over the summer. So um, I hope you'll enjoy today's session. So we would like to start with uh, Chris Ditz, um, who is a research data officer from University Exeter. And thank you very much for joining us this morning. Um, Chris has joined the University of Exeter in October 2017 and has 10 years of experience as a researcher. Um, Chris obtained his PhD in astrophysics from the University of Manchester in 2010 and has worked as a postdoctoral research scholar at the California Institute of Technology in the US and as a research fellow for the European Space Agency in the Netherlands. And Chris now uses the experience to provide support to researchers in managing their research data by establishing and promoting good practice in digital curation and providing data management advice, guidance, and training. Chris is happy to provide uh, assistance at all stages of the research lifecycle from data management plans at the very beginning of a project to preserving and sharing data in a repository at the end of project. So this is a little bit about you, Chris, and thank you for providing us with a short summary. Um, and you can go ahead and present. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Magdalena. Um, so I thought I would start by giving a little bit of a, a background. So as you mentioned, I'm the research data officer in Exeter, uh, part of the open research team in the library. So there are four of us in total covering both open access and research data management. So Exeter has required data management plans for all of their research projects as far back as 2013 when they implemented their first um, data management policy. Now, obviously this was before I, I joined the university, <clears throat> but from what I can understand and from some old presentations, um, DMP Online has actually always been promoted in terms of when supporting data management plans. So as you mentioned, I started in this role in October 2017. And at that point, the university was in the process of preparing for the upcoming GDPR, which was obviously coming into effect in May 2018. And as part of that preparation, one of the first major DMP Online developments that we implemented um, it was designed between us in the library and the ethics and governance team was to customize all of the templates in DMP Online to include a light touch data protection impact assessment. So basically we created a new section for all of the templates containing these nine questions from this DPIA. And this is really one of the methods that we took to try and ensure we were meeting all of the requirements in terms of GDPR, so that any researcher completing their data management plan also got these additional DPIA questions. So that was March 2018, GDPR came in. And then last year, with the change in the charging model, we wanted to retain our access and the ability that we had to customize those templates. And we, opted to go with the enhanced model um, and we are really happy with our fully customized version of DMP online with our color scheme that we have chosen to match our repository the customized URL and sort of as part of this launch of this new customized version we really used it as an opportunity to update all of the content that we had there so at that point Last year, we updated all of our themed guidance. Um, we updated our own um, Exeter template. We turned on the request feedback functionality for the first time, um, which was a little daunting because we weren't sure if we would be inundated with requests or not. Um, so we done all of that as part of the launch for the new version, which we officially launched in Open Access Week, which was October last year, I think. And so. As part of that launch, we obviously we had lots of promotion based around that, both you know online on our web pages, email signatures, but we also had drop in sessions. We had sessions where researchers would come and we would demonstrate all of the new functionality, so for example, the feedback request, etc. Um, so at this point, the policy or data policy, which is currently under review, does mandate DMPs but we don't mandate DMP online. So 
we still sometimes receive requests to review DMPs via email, but we do actually strongly recommend DMP online to researchers. Um, and so when, when we receive the emails, we do also highlight that they can use DMP online. So that was October last year when we officially launched. And I mentioned some of the promotion that we did, but actually one of the most impactful things was actually to really ensure that all of the relevant support services, so the ethics and governance team, research services, information governance, legal services, was to make sure that they were all aware of what we were doing. And they were also all directing researchers to DMP online for their data management plans. And we have actually seen that we get a, quite a few referrals in that way. So we've been monitoring our user base and it, is, it has obviously grown um, since October last year. And we're hoping that as the researchers use it and they experience the benefits um, and the new functionality that's always being implemented, that they will also speak to their colleagues and we can continue to grow. Um, I had a few points in terms of what we're planning to do looking forward. And so just going back to our DPIA questions. So as I mentioned, we had this additional section appended to all of the templates. And this is obviously not ideal, right? Not all researchers need to complete this DPIA. Um, and so that's why we're really happy with the implementation of the conditional questions. And at the minute, we are currently redesigning our additional questions and trying to implement them in such a way that we can incorporate the DPIA and have it hidden, obviously, if it's not relevant. So if there are no personal data involved in the project. So we're currently working on this on the dev site. Um, one thing that is still a little frustrating, and it's something that we've discussed, is that because this section is applied to each of the templates individually, we have to create this and repeat it for each of the templates. Um, and so that's why we want to spend the time now to make sure that we, we get it structured exactly how we want it before implementing it, because it's quite time consuming to replicate it for all of the templates. And also, if you then have to change a question or, you know, it, it, it just takes some time to implement. Um, Something else um, that we're doing is we're using the DMP Online API. So firstly, we're using it to monitor the usage stats for both plans and users. So I know this information is available via the website, but I actually wrote some Python scripts and I find it's just more convenient to have one single command line script to run um, that can produce the plots that I need when I need them. Um, so that's that's very useful. Something else that we have implemented in terms of the API is we have used it to send a weekly email containing a list of all of the plans that were created in the past week. So again, I have a script that automatically runs at midnight every Sunday. And so on Monday morning, when I check my emails, we have an email which contains a list of all the plans from the past, past week. And so we have, you know, various metadata such as the title and author and funder and template, but we also have, you know, the percentage of questions answered. So if there's a plan with only a few questions answered, maybe we can use that to go and contact the researcher and see if they're stuck on any particular question. And the final thing that we're currently working on is the university as a whole is in the process of implementing a new research management system. And one of the things that we're exploring is how and what data we want to incorporate from DMP online to ensure researchers aren't having to duplicate or enter information twice. And so there's an ethics module in the RMS and maybe some of that information can already be extracted if there is a data management plan written. And so we're, we're exploring how we can link these two systems together. So that's everything. That's great. Really, really interesting, the range of different things you're doing, Chris. Um, you know, linking up with the DPIA um, and also, you know, trying to share the information between the different systems and using the API. Um, I know others on the call have done some similar things. I don't know if anyone's got questions for, for Chris or things you'd like to know more about. 
you can unmute or, or type in chat. I, I was actually quite interested in the DPIA, um, like the sections you've added and, and now how you're reworking it. Um, what's the response from researchers been? Have they been, have they found it quite useful to address that alongside the DMP or what's their reaction so, been? I mean, it, it, it's been mixed, but that, that was the idea trying to get them to complete everything at once rather than have two separate forms to fill out. Um, but I, I think at the minute, because we make it clear that the DPAA is an additional section not required by the funder, yeah. sometimes researchers, because they're in a hurry, will ignore it. Other times they will complete it. Um, but what I do find is that they find it useful having completed it if they then go to ethics for an ethics review. And so they need to give the DMP and it's nice that they have that DPIA appended on to it as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think actually the conditional questions will really help there because like you say, it's then in those cases where they're going to have to do ethics review, they've already got that covered and others can just easily bypass it. But it was a good a good point. Um, we did have a feature request. Um, it's something that we should prioritise on um, trying to make sure that applies across all templates. So you only have your custom section once, not having to add it onto each one. Did anyone else have questions for, for Chris? I'm just looking if anyone's unmuted. Not that I can see. We can we can move on, but if you have questions like as as we're going along, by all means add them into chat as well. I think there's some really nice examples. Actually, the thing she said about um you know, the way that you've gone out and um, raised awareness of the tool and working with other services um, are really helpful because you can need that coordinated message across the whole uni. And I think a range of engagement opportunities, you know, doing like your drop ins and your trainings. I think that's all really, really useful. Can we remind everybody what the DPIA is? Oh, oh sorry, data them? protection impact assessment. So, okay. um, yeah, it's kind of more the ethics um, process, um, but it, it aligns with, you know, the data collection. So. Excellent. OK, if no one has questions, please feel free to ask at any point and just either unmute yourself or um, feel free to um, send us a message through the chat. Don't be worried if you're having dogs barking in the background or something. It's completely <laughs> acceptable these days. Um, so just to continue, um, I we did receive an email um, prior to session just asking about the whether you know we are working on the test plans being removed from the usage statistics. And I just want to let you know there is a ticket um, which you can look up easily. Um, it's 2158 uh, where you can just check the progress and what we have been working on um, and currently it is still in our um, test stage uh, but I just wanted to show you that there is going to be uh, the nice stick which will allow you to differentiate the test plans um, so yeah. we are working on so, this yeah. sorry yeah, go um, what we pushed out in the last release, there were a couple of usage um, tickets left. So the one about excluding mm -hmm. test plans and the Google Analytics integration, um, they have both been done. So you can see them on our, our test site um, and you'll see in the tickets, you'll see screen grabs of like what it looks like from when we've done the user acceptance testing. Um, and actually we've been testing Google Analytics with um, Glasgow Uni as well, so that you can see um, how to set it up for your own institution. These haven't been pushed to our live site yet. Um, and I think in terms of deployment, because we've been working concurrently on um, the Rails 5 migration, um, this is kind of now bundled in with that, which is a much bigger release um, mm -hmm. because it's changing all aspects of the tool, like migrating to Rails 5 essentially breaks everything. We need to rework and, and make sure that we migrate everything and get all the functionality working. So that has delayed when this will be pushed out. So unfortunately, even though it's ready, it's not on the live site just yet. Um, so it's going to be several weeks until we've got through all the Rails 5 work and that comes out. Um, but if that's problematic, do let us know. Um, we may be able to, you know, kind of 
pull out those aspects um, but at the moment they're scheduled for a later release uh, mm -hmm. but you can see how it works if you want to check that just now and if anyone wants to test the Google Analytics let us know as well we can pass through the details to try that out mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. And I just want to let you know that this is unfortunately the last week for Sarah and she has put together a very lovely blog um, which you can have a look at. Um, I don't know, Sarah, whether you want to say a few more sentences about that? <laughs> yeah, or... I, can. I think this is actually the one Kevin had yeah. posted when um, it was oh, first announced. So, so even, yeah, three months ago so, um, when sorry. I handed in my, my notice, I'm moving to a new job at Giant, um, which is um, the organization that deals with all of the national research and education networks in Europe. Um, so like uh, the JISC JANA in the UK, our kind of high speed network or SUNET in Sweden um, or Hacker, uh, um, the, the group in Finland that deal with this. Um, they coordinate that work and my role will be to essentially bring together research data management communities with um, the networking communities um, and to kind of help them all work together in EOSC. So even though I'm moving to a new job, um, it will still be linked to RDM and I'm sure I'll still be in touch with DCC and DMP online communities. Interestingly, one thing we've been doing recently is working with the team in Sweden um, about a national service for DMP online and that's the networking provider there that's trying to broker that. So, uh, you know, I'm sure there'll be links between the, the two roles and, and ways that I still see you all. Thank you, Sarah. Um, and Sarah, sorry, I thought I added your blog post here. I added probably also the wrong link from April, but I, I seen already Patricia edit uh, the new blog post, which she put together yesterday. So um, you can read more about that in there. Um, and some of the, we I think we already mentioned last month, but for those, for those who didn't join us uh, last month, uh, some of her uh, role will be taken over by Patricia, who will be coordinating the team and uh, working on the product management of DMP online. So you'll be seeing more of Patricia, uh, who is joining us in the phone call today. Um, and yeah, thank you, Sarah, for everything. And you will be very much missed in our <laughs> sessions. Um, thank you. But just to move on and not to be too sad, uh, we are having Diana and Theo um, joining us today, who just wanted to talk a little bit about um, the work our summer intern is working over the sum uh, summer. Uh, he, Theo is going to work on um, reworking some of the admin pages. So Diana and Theo, if you would like to talk about it a little bit more and maybe talk about the survey you put together. Okay, well, I'll start very quickly and then pass over to Theo so that he can say hi. Um, essentially, we um, are doing a, a usability test and we're carrying out um, surveys and interviews um, and we'll also ask people to perform tasks, um, supervise tasks. Initially, we will release a survey, uh, which is very brief. Um, I think it should take five to ten minutes to complete. It depends how much you type, do you type up because there are a few open questions and it's up to you how much information you like to give. Um, Obviously, we want as much as possible because we want to improve the interface. So the last usability test I think we did was in 2016, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And the, since then, we've developed a lot of um, features, particularly for the administrative interface. So we'd want to talk mostly with you, uh, users with administrative rights. Um, we really would appreciate, um, thanks Patricia, uh, Patricia has just put um, the, the link um, um, in the chat. We really would appreciate your, your input. Um, the tool is for you and we can't improve it if we don't have um, your comments. Um, so what we've done for this is to recruit a summer intern um, who is a, an Edinburgh Computer Science graduate. I'll let, uh, no graduate, he's, he's just finished third year, but I'll let him introduce himself. Theo, do you want to say a few words for everybody? I don't know if you have a camera, maybe you can switch it on so they can Hello. see your young face. Hello, everybody. I'm Theo, and I'm going to be helping to run our usability testing for this year. Yep, and we're going to test out all of the new admin features, and we'll run through with testers, and we'll see how they react to the new features and which features they like and which improvements they would like to make. 
Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Theo. So the things we've done with usability tests in, in the past, it's checking the workflow. So checking different tasks that you perform regularly, like enabling the feedback or template publishing and seeing, you know, where things where you maybe don't know the, where to click the buttons if things are in the wrong place or um, ways we could improve that. So hopefully the survey will help us identify um, some aspects and then we'll go on and do usability tests as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, we will also approach some of you for, for interviews where we would ask uh, a few more questions in, in, in detail. Um, if you want to volunteer for an interview as well, please enter your name in the last question of the survey. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, just to let you know this month i am a little bit slower unfortunately i don't have the newsletter ready just yet but it will be coming out this week um with the links to this survey um that theo and diana put together um i don't know actually sorry i i started to continue but i just want to ask whether anyone had any more questions about what just diana and theo presented and if not, um, you can always just email us to DMP online at dcc.ac.uk if, if you can think of or you just wish to volunteer. Um, and I don't know, Sarah or Patricia, whether you have anything more but, um, to say. But I just want to let you know that our May recording um, is live on YouTube. And there is also a playlist with all of the previous drop-in sessions there in case you are interested. Um, but I would like to open the space just for you in a case there are some more questions that were not answered or something you were thinking of and would like to ask us now, please feel free to either unmute yourself or just send us a message. Don't be shy. <laughs> Okay, but there is no pressure. Um, if there is nothing yeah. you can think of, uh, you can always just drop us an email. I don't know, Sarah, whether there is anything more you would like to add, or we are joined by, I think, Sam and Ray today as well. Um, if there is anything they would like to pick up on or just mention. So, so nothing particularly from from mm -hmm. my end. Um, just a flag to people. I mean, I, I hope these drop-in sessions um, are useful. I think it's always nice to have the examples from different universities about how they're using the tool, so you can learn lessons from that, um, and also for us to give you updates. But if um, let us know because we want to make sure that it's a way for you to find out about the tool and what's coming or to have certain discussions and, and chats. So um, yeah, any ideas that, of what you'd like in these sessions, let us know too and we can reflect that in the agenda. But yeah, from yeah. me as well, I mean, I, I probably will show up on other drop-ins in future, but um, if I don't see you before then, um, thank you to all of you for your inputs into the tool and also obviously to Magdalena and Patricia and Diana and Sam and Ray and everyone who makes the team work so well. So thank you. Thank you. Well, it wouldn't be without you, Sarah. No, but thank you very much. <laughs> Um, okay, just a few very boring messages from me. Um, I tend to repeat myself, but I found out in the past sometimes these messages are, you know, um, are just forgotten. So if you're not following us on Twitter, um, do follow us on Twitter at DMP Online. It's quite a good way to find out about our these dropping sessions or new releases or about our newsletter. We do have a Facebook page and a LinkedIn page. And um, if you are not subscribed to our monthly newsletter, definitely do so. Um, thank you, Patricia. I think you're just copying and pasting the links for everyone who's still um, in here. And our next drop-in meeting will be on the 14th of July at half past 10, and we'll be joined um, by Mariette from the University of Amsterdam. So um, if you have a time, definitely do join us. We are looking forward to have you there. And if you have any questions prior to session, feel free to drop us an email to dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. But if no one has any more questions, thank you all again for joining us this morning. Big thanks to Chris for presenting. It has been uh, very interesting to hear how you go about using GMP online at your institution. And thanks to Diana and Theo for presenting their work. 
and massive thanks to Sarah for everything and for the support and for being part in these drop-in sessions. You'll be very much missed in here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Have a good day, everybody. Have a lovely bye -bye. day, all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.